Well, here's Buddy. Go with the dish now, not the right side for Lewis. No yes, margin for right. error at all, but look at the way he brought that up. <laughs> Buddy Lewis. Hey, fantastic shot. Welcome to Inside Melbourne for one last time in 2019. Clint Stanaway with you. Ben Gibson is here too. Hi, Ben. Hey, Clint. Good to be back for a special episode. Absolutely special it is because we've got Jordan Lewis as our special guest. The last one of 2019 and the last one as Ever. an AFL player. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. Does that sound weird? Um, I don't know. Like, I'll, I've sort of tried to pinpoint a moment where it'll feel weird that this is sort of it. the last thing that I do. Um, I mean, Max gave me a standing ovation yesterday for my last bench press. So that was <laughs> a, a pretty special moment. Um, but yeah, maybe this is the last one that I'll do, which is cool. A lot of uh, media commitments yesterday. How did that all go? I saw the twins running around on the MCG. If you haven't seen the photo, Michael Wilson took an absolute perler, a black and white photo of Ollie and Huey yeah. in Gold Square. Yeah, I mean, he just knows how to capture the moment. Even when I was at Hawthorne, we had him in when we had grand final week and he was just sort of in the background and would capture the most amazing photos. And he had one yesterday of the twins. There was some pigeons on the ground and <laughs> I, I don't know who said it to them, but they said, you know, go chase the pigeons. And before you knew it, they're up the other end of the ground. So um, their endurance is better than mine. <laughs> were you surprised just how quickly they got there? Because you were just taking photos and all of a sudden gone. Absolutely. Yeah. I literally, I think we took three or four photos and looked around and they were up the other end. So, um, yeah, maybe they got mum's speed as well. <laughs> it's a good chance to say your thank yous as well. It's been an amazing career. Uh, what was it like sitting there in front of the media, obviously alongside Alistair Clarkson, who you've had so much to do with, and Simon Goodwin, who more recently you've had a lot to do with? Yeah, it, it's a funny thing. I, I didn't have any notes, which probably stupidly uh, I went into the interview with, but I think I, I didn't miss anyone, which is always the it's fear. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's... I don't think as a player you get a lot of time to um, recap your career and recap the moments because it, it just moves on. Everything moves on and win-loss, you just move on. And it's probably at times like this that you do recap and reconnect, I suppose, with people that you haven't seen for a long period of time. Even after Ruffy's game on the weekend, he had a few beers after that and you see people that you haven't seen for a period of time. And it's always those moments are nice. So, yeah, I think from, from now on in, clearly I'll have a lot more time to to do that and um, the unprofessional lifestyle may allow you to go out for a dinner here and there and have a nice glass of wine. I'm assuming you wouldn't like the fuss too much, but are you enjoying this last week and soaking it up a bit? No, I'm not, to be honest. I Yeah, I don't like it. It's um, I just, it sits uncomfortable with me. I, I enjoy the whole um, team success and, and everyone, you know, recognising um, groups, but not necessarily individuals. I just, yeah, I don't know. It's just part of my makeup, I suppose. I yeah, don't feel too comfortable with it. Are you glad you did it? Came to Melbourne? Yeah, I am. And I've always said that if I had the time again, I would make exactly the same decision. Um, I had the same coach for 14 year, 13 years at Hawthorne, and that was great. It provided stability. Um, it provided an environment that you're familiar with. But for me, at the latter part of your career, and I, I was never one to seek out change, but when the opportunity provided itself, I, you know, I weighed everything up and, and I've loved every minute of it. It's been a, a challenging time and um, you know, to enjoy that success that we had last year for the first time in 12 years was such a buzz. Mm. Um, and to, you know, to meet new people and lifelong friends um, and as Clarko said yesterday, you double your connection base as well. And, you know, you meet some people that you'll always remain friends with. And that for me has been a, a really exciting period. And I've challenged myself. I don't think, I think you get challenged um, from a professional and playing point of view when th within the, the Hawthorne environment that I was in. But, you know, to step out of your comfort zone, to meet new people, to try and forge a different career to a different club provided me with a challenge that I'd never had before. There's still a little bit of Clarko. Uh, Melbourne in Clarko. Just, he did, I remember watching him as a kid. So. A bit before my time. but <laughs> <laughs> Another one. Yeah, well, I mean, even when he first arrived at Hawthorne, he, he brought in Todd Viney. Yeah. Um, and then later on, I mean, Anthony Ingerson was there for yeah. a little bit. Um, 
Who else was there? Chris Fagan was there for, Nita was there a, for a good period of time. Well. Nita came through out of Muse, Cameron Bruce. So there's a lot of Melbourne people yeah. that have been through the Hawthorne there doors. I assume you were feeling pretty comfortable at the Hawks. You've been in the system for a while. What was it like walking in here day one and you're a new kid all of a sudden? Yeah, I, I reached out to Max and said, can you pick me up? Because it's just little things that you don't um, don't know. Like where do you park? Where do, what door do you go through? What do you do when you get to the club? Things that you just just become automatic now were all really foreign to me. So I wanted to have a little bit of comfortability knowing that I can just follow him wherever he went at the start. But within within a week, I felt pretty comfortable and um, understood, um, you know, where my where my expertise would be needed. Um, and yeah, from then on in, it's, it's been a really good ride. Was, was it challenging taking on a leadership role in a side when you felt quite new and you're still building relationships? Nah, no, I, I didn't feel that was um, challenging at all. It, it was... Um, it was right in my sort of niche, to be honest. That's sort of where I, um, where I, you know, feel comfortable. Um, and I knew that the leaders knew needed someone that had had experience um, from a successful environment. Um, so that was that was quite easy. What now, Geordie? I know you've been asked countless times, but tell the Melbourne fans what you what you're thinking of doing post match this weekend. Put the feet up, no doubt, for a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'll go to the dark side with you, Clint. Yeah. So, hey, there's um, a lot of light. <laughs> it's a great place to be. I won't be sitting out in my car at the front of the scanning um, facilities, <laughs> though. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll you know I'm signing out with Fox, so yep. I'll um, do them and, and also some SEM work, which would be which would be good. I've enjoyed a little bit of that this year, um, so that's sort of where that lies. And then continue to build my wine brand, which I'm really passionate about. There was a lot of talk that you could potentially go into coaching and stick around with the club. Was there any interest in that at all? Oh, there's there's interest in it, and there's I don't think that'll die off. Um, but I I just think you know just to put a a full stop on the the day to day you know grind of being a professional athlete, thinking about football. I thought I needed a bit of a break, and my family needed a bit of a break from that. So yeah, the season next year will be full on. But I think between now and then, I, I can really, you know, sit back and just enjoy some quiet time and not have to think about the decisions you're making on a daily basis. How do you think that'll be all of a sudden on Sunday? You're not an AFL footballer. You don't have to come to the club every day. Is it going to be a weird feeling waking up? Oh, it is. And every, I mean, every decision I've made for the last 15 years, you consciously think about how will that impact me and how will that impact the club? So when you don't have that responsibility, you're not going to go out and, and misbehave, yeah. but... It is that sense of freedom and I, and I suppose that sense of, of being an adult again to make your own decisions and your own consequences. How do the family feel about the whole decision, Lucy and the kids? Um, the tw twins probably a bit young to appreciate it, but Freddie? Yeah, Freddie won't be too happy. Um, <laughs> you know, to come in, just little stuff. The he kids loves it around here, doesn't he? Loves it. And the kids probably don't realise who are involved in football clubs, you know, to go down to the rooms and just muck around with... You know, my mates, but are, but are heroes to little kids, has been a really fortunate thing that Freddie's been able to enjoy that this year. And, yeah, that, that'll certainly go missing. So maybe the old boy will pull on the boots at a country <laughs> footy team just to keep that, you know, that dream of extra cash boring. coming through. That's <laughs> Freddie must be getting used to playing on the G too. Had a run around on Friday night and again yesterday. He must enjoy that. Yeah, and he was filthy. He couldn't come on 360 last night. He wanted to, a little bit more screen time. So... Um, He'll, he'll learn. He'll, he'll get his day in the sun. When you do look back, what's, what stands out? Obviously, the premierships are really special. Is there, is there a moment? Um, I, think it's, I think it's the journey. I, I think, um, you know, I was even walking off the track today and I ran into Craig Bellamy and he said, what, what will you miss? And I miss, I miss the training aspect. I, every single training session that I've gone out, I've really loved and I love the competitiveness of it and I love... There's, it's up to you whether you train well mm. or not. There's no media there. There's no coaches riding your heart. It's it's really up to you. And I've enjoyed that challenge. So I'll certainly miss miss that. I won't miss um, you know after a loss or or anything like that. That there's always hard to deal with. Um, but yeah, I'll certainly miss coming to an environment where there is 50 guys that are professional athletes. Um, working hard but then also enjoying a good time as well um, 
and you don't really need to have a high level of communication outside of the club because you know that tomorrow you'll see them again. So that that you'll miss. It's been a tough old year, fair to say, here at the Melbourne Footy Club. But do you think? How do you think the club is is placed looking into the future, long term? Yeah, I I truly believe that they're they're placed really well, and you know this year for a variety of reasons hasn't gone well, but. Um, I just remember my experiences and we, we had similar times at Hawthorne in a period after a grand final and you just learn learn so much mm. and you know the boys who are who are around next year and, and come back to pre-season I've got no doubt their attitude when they come back this pre-season compared to last pre-season will be completely different because you don't know what you don't know and you just think after a successful year it's just going to happen again and what I did the previous year is, is going to hold me in good stead and I think everyone's found out from a, a tactical coaching point of view, from an athlete point of view, that that's just not the case. You've been a part of success, obviously. Can you see sim similarities between Melbourne and Hawthorne and where we could be heading? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, we're really at a crossroads now and, and it's up to, to individuals and, um, and the playing group is which way do you want to go and you've got to make some really harsh decisions and... You know, you, you got to come back to the pre-season with a mindset of last year was really, really hard to deal with and we don't want to be back there again and especially not year after year. So they need to come back with a, a really steely mindset um, and understanding that, that it won't just happen. Inside Melbourne, thanks to Zurich, Jordan Lewis, our special guest. Questions from the outer after this short break. Thanks to our co-major partner and podcast sponsor, Zurich. For over 100 years, they've been ensuring the people and the things you truly love. And just like you, they truly love footy and they truly love Melbourne. Welcome back to Inside Melbourne, brought to you by Zurich. Questions from the outer, starting off with one from Jake Lever. Do you think that you are the best player ever at getting free stuff? <laughs> um, I've used my networks well. Where, what is he talking about? Where is that coming in, into play? Oh, what do you want? Some, uh, <laughs> some gear, do you reckon? New, new or? shoes. <laughs> oh, I mean, I've been pretty fortunate to have really good sponsors that have stuck with me for a long period of time. But, um, yeah, if you be nice to people and you keep in contact with people... They look after you. They look that after continues you. in the media as well. Yeah. Now and then, yeah. So don't worry about that. Yeah, so, um, we'll um, look after you. Sift you right up there. Another one from a teammate, Corey Maynard, wants to know why are you taking all of my retirement shine? Well, you got to play a game, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Announce your retirement. <laughs> uh, this is an interesting one. Anna Hume she says her, her mum ran into you in recent weeks. What's the strangest encounter you've had with a fan away from the club? Her mum, hang on, her mum ran into you at Malvern Regal Sleep Solutions. All oh, right, yeah, they're one of my sponsors. <laughs> um, oh, strangest. I'm guessing a few people would come across you in public and not bug you, but let you know that they're a fan. A few. I, I mean, there's countless people that you know they're looking at you and talking about right. you, but it's very rare they come up and um, have conversations. They just think they know you. Yeah, Somewhere. yeah. I yeah. mean, Who if you go to a pub and, and someone's had a few beers, they certainly are a little bit more confident. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I don't think I've had none that really stick out. We've spoken about the wine um, in previous podcasts. I think the last two we've got into some pretty heavy conversations about the beautiful blends that you're uh, offering. Uh, one of our members wants to know if there'll be a 20% discount off all wines for Melbourne members. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I could look into that, but it's always hard because we've got the great Tyrrells on board Melbourne. So great wine. You can't compete with them. Uh, Lauren Crump wants to know what the biggest difference has been at Melbourne as opposed to Hawthorne? Um, uh, I suppose I suppose experience at the moment. I mean, we put out a side on the weekend with an average game of 65. So, you know, we sort of lacked experience. Um, Hawthorne is a, nearly the oldest list at the club. So, I mean, there's, there's similarities in a sense that Hawthorne, when we first got there, were... Um, you know, we're trying to find a way and, and trying to work out how to win and all that type of stuff. So Melbourne certainly found that last year, but now they're in a position where Hawthorne were in sort of 2009, 2010, where they need to ramp things up and rediscover that. A bit more fun here. Mick Hawksworth wants to know what's harder, having two first names or making eye contact with Max Gorn? 
two first names. Jordan and Lewis, I guess. You spell Lewis differently, don't you? Well, I don't know. If you're calling your son or daughter well, Lewis L E W I S for their first name. I guess. Um, <laughs> what was the second part of the question? Making eye contact with Maxie. Freddie loves Maxie, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obsessed. Uh, he needs to get his teeth done. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, who is the funniest team member you've ever met from uh, EK's one? Uh, I like Brad Hill's humour. Yeah? Yeah, he's a bit quirky and energy. Could, could Brad Hill join the red and blue potentially? You're asking the wrong bloke. <laughs> the Demon Head wants to know, who was your favourite player growing up? Um... It's hard. I mean, I used to love guys like... I was a Collingwood supporter, so Paul Williams, Gavin Brown, Paul Kelly, uh, Mark Rusciuto, um, Gary Hocking, you know, those, those types of players. And Coops wants to know, who will you support now, Melbourne or Hawthorne? Going to be Both. a tough one? Both, yeah. 50-50. Yeah. Uh, one from Sam here. When did you start thinking about retiring? Was there a... Probably the start of the year, to be honest. Yeah. I knew it was my last year on my contract, so there was always going to be a, a decision that had to be made at the end. And then I suppose the middle part of the year when my form fell away was probably when I started to put things in place for next year. Um, yeah, so that was probably six or seven months out. Do you feel like your body's in a position where you potentially could play on? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, I've been pretty fortunate which has been good. So, you know, I leave the game still being able to exercise. So it's, it's nice, you know, I won't be limping around like a lot of the coaches do here. That's good news. That's where the country cash is coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever be that person. I just, <laughs> being a country boy, I just, it'd rip your heart out. Uh, someone wants to know, what was your favorite game? Does one stand out from all 318? Is it a premiership? Is it a final a personal moment? I've always said um, the 2013 prelim final against Geelong. Purely for the fact that they just had beaten us, I think, 11 times in a row post-2008. Yeah. And we were down at 22 points at three-quarter time. We came back and won. And that was, for me, just the the greatest game that I've been a part of. In terms of in red and blue, uh, the semi-final last year would have been a bit of fun against your old mob. Yeah, that, that was good. I mean, fine, so Geelong final and, and against Hawthorne were were unbelievable. They were just enjoyable. Yeah, enjoyable they were just, fortnight, wasn't it? Yeah, and even the West Coast game over there to put ourselves guaranteed finals, that was, yeah, they're, they're great games. Could you feel sort of the nerves on that day? Like an amazing atmosphere at that place. People that haven't been there won't quite understand, but what was it like out in the middle? Yeah, I mean, you can see I've got goosebumps now when you just you think about it. it was It's extraordinary because at a point in the game, you, you scan to the crowd and you can just see the excitement, the, the relief the emotions that they go through. As a player, you don't really have too many emotions, but fans clearly have emotions um, because they can't sort of impact on the ground. So that was, yeah, that was pretty memorable. They were queuing up from about, oh, I don't know, early morning, EMCC anyway, and just to turn out as you guys ran out for the warm up, yeah. you see it almost full yeah. and full of red. Oh, yeah, it's, 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 it's it gives you goosebumps. And that's, yeah, that's why you play. It's, yeah. um, and that's, you know, every big game, I'll, all, I'll always drive around the MCG just to see people lining up at the MCC, see the fans arriving at the game, and it gives you a sense of what the game's about. Um, because as players, you literally drive, turn left to Brutton Avenue, go down to the car park, and you don't experience that. Yeah. So I think it's always important to always remind yourself that, you know, there's a whole different atmosphere. Are you looking forward to, I guess, getting the opportunity to sit in the crowd and soak it up from the other side of the fence at some stage? Yeah, and have a beer at the footy. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice. I haven't, I mean, I can't remember, bar maybe a grand final, that I've gone to the footy and had a beer and just sat back and enjoyed it. It just hasn't happened for 15 or 16 years, so it'd be nice. I'm quite experienced in that. Yeah, I could tell well, you I did see you when we played Brisbane maybe last oh, year. Oh, yeah, that was a, yeah. That bar. Yeah, behind the goals. I might have to pencil myself <laughs> in for that. Hey, I could tell you it was a very good, <laughs> it was a very good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that wraps us up. You got any last ones for, for Geordie before we go? I think the fans have just about covered it all. It's well, uh, just to finish on, uh, when you spoke to the players, what what advice did you have for them heading into, well, the pre-season ahead in 2020, season 2020? It was a little bit of what I touched on before is you, you have to come back with a different mindset and a different attitude because we, you saw what happened. And, and we had a lot of pre-season surgeries last year. Um that's that's part of it but i think also the mindset 
you come back and you have to improve and you have to be hard mm. on each other and you have to train well because what happens in day one of pre-season can impact the way that you play during the season. So that was sort of my advice. Well, on behalf of the, um, the membership base, uh, supporters out there, congratulations on what's been a sensational career. Thank and, you. And thanks for getting into the red and blue as well. I'm, I'm sure on behalf of everyone, they would agree that um, you've been an amazing acquisition. Your leadership um, for one has been tremendous. I've enjoyed it. It's been good fun. Benny, thanks to you too. Thank you. Thanks, Geordie. Pleasure. And we'll catch you in 2020 on Inside Melbourne with thanks to Zurich. <laughs>